Dạ kính thưa các bác, các cô, các chú, các bác em ngon không? Có. Dạ con tên là Long Nghi, or my English name is Alexander for our native English speakers here. I am I'm going to represent the youth group today. Con xin đại diện cho nhóm trẻ CSSU hôm nay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, hồi nãy tí giờ các bác đã thấy nhiều cái hình ảnh của tụi con từ mấy cái um, trại hè, trại mùa đông. And this is a picture from one of our most recent camps, uh, one of our largest camps rather. Um, our youth group started in 2016, formalized in 2016, and we have large chapters in California, Texas, and Virginia, but Virginia is by far one of the biggest and most established youth groups so far. Our age groups range from six years old all the way to me, the oldest, 22, 23 years old. And our mission, always from the day, very beginning, has always been, and this is the youth to establish this, not the adults, but our generation realizes that there's a specific need for children our age to deepen their spirituality and find a place to find their inner peace, whether it be through meditation, through Intuko Tai Chi, or through a positive environment with friends. And so this is what our youth group decided to do since 2016. A little bit of introduction about what kind of activities that we do. We do mainly three different types of activities and the scale to which we do them uh, tends to vary. But the first type of activity that we do is service activities. There are a lot of different groups that do service projects, but the scale to which we do them tends to be a little bit bigger, especially for our age. Our age group is pretty young. But so far, we have done medical trips to Vietnam. We have done a charity fundraising drive. Every single month, we donate money to charity causes that we choose in Vietnam. So the youth, every single month, choose whether they want to help build a school, whether they want to give educational scholarships to students in need in other third world countries. Um, sometimes we even build wells. We also go to California once a year to volunteer at the World Peace Gathering, which is a huge event, a global event, sponsored by the overarching um, CSS. We also do on a monthly basis, we go out to Washington, D.C., and through our own cooking or through our own money, we decide to donate food to the homeless. And then during the wintertime especially, now it's kind of tapering off, but we usually do hypothermia shelter programs. We go to churches just like this one, and then we bring food, we bring water to the homeless people that come in um, to escape the cold. And so I just wanted to run through a few of the pictures that we have. Um, so when we went to Vietnam, we happened to, there were a lot of charity causes that we had donated to in the past. Uh, we donated to um, temples that were housing elderly. We donated to uh, orphanages, we donated to schools. And so on our trip to Vietnam in the last, uh, the last year, a lot of our youth group, we had around 10 to 12 different uh, youth from Texas and Virginia and California, all around 15 to around you know 18 and we went to visit those locations that we had previously donated to, just to see um, how much we were able to help and see the people we wanted to help. So this is my younger brother, you'll see him later, uh, Kangi, and this is us in one of the temples that we decided to visit, visiting the elderly there. On the left, you'll see a picture of our friend Matthew, who unfortunately can't be here today, but we went to visit an orphanage, and we donated to them uh, school uniforms, we donated to them uh, clothing that they could use. And in this particular photo, our friend Matthew um, saw that the pants were too, too big for this, for this kid. And so he took some of the string from the, from the pants, he cut it loose, it was loose string. And then he made a belt for, for, the, um, for that boy. And so that was really nice of him. On the right, you'll see a picture of me. Um, this is also at the same orphanage, but we also decided to donate a lot of stuffed animals that we have at home, our own stuffed animals from when we were kids that we don't use anymore. And all these kids that we have, we brought a total of almost 300 stuffed animals back with us. And all of them were, were gone by the first couple of days. 
for this photo, we, this is the same orphanage, but there are a lot of children who um, have certain particular diseases. Some of them have cerebral palsy, for example, and are unable to uh, cognitively function or they're cognitively impaired. And so this is us visiting one of those children who isn't able to sit up at all. She just lays there day after day, and we were able to go there and provide her some warmth and some company. You'll notice earlier that I used the word medical mission, but so far I've only shown you charity stuff. Um, we were partnered together with an organization called the Sakya Care Foundation, which routinely every single year goes to India, Nepal, Vietnam, other different third world countries to provide free medical care, whether it be dental or optometry or general um, physician care. And so a lot of our youth group, because we were over 16, were able to aid in medical procedures. So this is uh, myself along with um, one of our parent uh, supporters in, in Houston. And this is a picture of my brother. He really loves, I think my brother discovered his passion for dentistry after this, this trip. So we had a lot of fun doing that. These are a few of the photos of us in Washington, D.C. We just happened to go out there on a Sunday, which is when um, the homeless people at this particular park, Franklin Square, they know that on Sundays a lot of organizations come out there and they line up uh, easily 100 to 200 people for food early in the morning. And we're glad that we were able to help them. So this moves on to the second type of activities that we do, and this is kind of what CSS is known for. We do a lot of meditation and cultivation practices. Um, as a young person, it's very, very difficult for us to sit down for five minutes in a day, put down your phone, and really let yourself settle before you go to sleep. And that's something that we try to train in our youth from when they're very young, all the way until they're all the way in high school. And so, in order to promote those kinds of really uh, positive activities or positive habits, uh, we decided to do what is called an online meditation. Because all the kids nowadays, they really, well, including me, we really like to do things together. And the best way to do that is through the internet. And so the best way for us to sit together is if we do a conference call together over the computer. And so every single night we have around a half an hour meditation that we do, um, that I lead, and then around 30 to 40 different youth from across the country, California, Texas, and Virginia, and some people even from, you know, Colorado even, they call in, and it's a good way for us to maintain contact with each other. In addition to that, our Virginia youth also have a weekly meditation class on Sundays at the CSS East headquarters from 11 to 1. Um, that's a good way for us to get in contact with each other and hang out with each other in person. We teach interval Tai Chi and we teach meditation. We also have a special class that um, I teach called uh, Buddhist Dharma. Basically, we tend to teach um, things that the adults tend to learn a little, a little bit deeper and it relates to the meditation that we're doing. And so, for the older youth, once you get into around high school level, um, that's when they get really, really interested and they start to want to find their own path. And that's what we're there for. We're trying to give them a kind of guidance. For the younger kids, we have a storytelling program where many of you may know program, uh, stories that you might find online or stories that you might hear through um, the SAM program that we do for CSS East. All, a lot of those stories have morals behind them. And for the younger children, children who are around six years old, maybe to like through middle school, this is the best way for them to learn. And so we also provide that kind of program too. So these are a couple of photos of our youth group when they were first starting out in terms of uh, doing meditation. They worked their way up from five minutes of sitting still to now almost 45 minutes, almost an hour of sitting still. <laughs> A lot of the programs that we happen to have include Buddhist Dharma, and so this is, for Buddhist Dharma it's a discussion based class, and so we all sit in the circle and we just discuss the material that we're going over. And then this is just a snapshot of our class for uh, our integral Tai Chi. Our youth group in Virginia is somewhere between 30 kids to 40 kids on a really good day when we have our class like that. So 40 kids packed into this room doing things together and having fun. The last type of activity that we do, which is probably our most popular amongst our youth, is the social activities that we do. So every single year we have a summer camp and we also have a winter retreat. 
And these summer camps and winter retreats are held in Virginia, and they're national camps. So we have Texas, Houston, Houstonians, uh, people from Dallas, people from California, who fly to Virginia to attend these camps with us. And during those camps, we do a lot of nature activities. We do the same uh, things that we do, meditation, tai chi, but we also go hiking and canoeing, too. And so these are some of the pictures that we have of our camps. Our camps are big. They can go up to 80 to 90 people. And that's all of us just crammed into a, we rent out these really, really nice um, retreat spaces. And then um, all of us go in there, we stay overnight. The camps are six to seven days, and we stay overnight. And then all the food that's there is provided for us through the venue. So we also play a lot of other games. We do tug of war, we do kickball. These are some of our Texas kids joining us last time for tug of war. We also go you know, canoeing and hiking around Burke Lake. We have campfires at night with s'mores included. This is the dining hall, the last summer camp that we had. All the food is vegetarian, but it was still really good. Along the heights, we also have picnics. And this is one of our, our largest groups, our 100 person camp that we had. And we went hiking in Shenandoah and Skyline. So a lot of the things that we do, we have a lot of fun. And we hope that um, if you have any grandchildren or children or any relatives that you think would enjoy joining us, uh, this is something that we really uh, encourage you to join. Especially from my point of view, being a college graduate. I just graduated from UVA um, last May. And I think... <laughs> I can tell you from my own personal experience, uh, going through school, a lot of the times I'm very stressed, but I have the excuse of telling my friends, I can't go hang out with you today. I have to do meditation every night. So that was my way to de-stress. And I hope that for all of your children, all of your grandchildren, that that's something that you can, that's a gift that they can take with them to college when it's the most stressful time in their lives. And so, kind of to wrap up, because I don't want to drag it too long, um, a lot of your children, if they're curious about our group, or if they want to know a little bit more about our group, all of our pictures that you saw today, all of the information about when classes are, who we are as people, can be found on our Facebook page. So you can take a picture of this. This is the screen that you'll see when you join. And then, um, have fun. And then hopefully, we'll see you in our classes. You can show any time, no registration required. Classes are free. We'd love to have you there. We'd love to make you friends. Thank you. Thank you.